Hello folks. This is a video from an awesome artist named Virtual SG. I'm gonna take a trip down memory lane. Go check his channel out. It's a blast. Fry's used to be an electronics and appliance superstore known for their elaborately themed retail outlets. Fry's was a privately owned company and for the last few years of their existence, as their inventory became more and more scarce, even their employees were in the dark about what was going on. But I'm not trying to do a documentary about Fry's, it's just that I live near the one in Burbank, California, arguably their most impressive store, and as things look terribly grim for the place, I thought if I don't get some video of this wonderland, I'm gonna be sorry when it's gone. Especially because the Burbank store was themed after, of all things, something dear to my heart, 50s era sci-fi. So this shot demonstrates the sheer size of the place. This was a superstore located in the heart of the American entertainment industry. This particular store was a haven for media producers and tech geeks of all kinds. Here's a mascot of some kind as you enter the parking lot. I think this guy is a holdover from the early days. We won't be seeing much of him inside. And here is the entrance. The awning, as you can see, is a flying saucer rammed into the building. And as we go in here, the first thing we see is the customer service department, which is decked out like an old school gas station. And this is really just a fabulous idea for your customer service department. This works on so many levels with the rest of the theme. And we are greeted by a newspaper boy, something you might see in lots of old movies, and he's showing us this ominous headline. And just over our heads is that crashed flying saucer and its occupants. brandishing weapons, no less. Those weapons have done a number on this soldier's jeep. But he's a trooper and he's gonna fight it out to the end. Not far from that scene, we run into this imposing metal man cradling the infamous damsel in distress. Is he making off with her or rescuing her? It's all up to you and that's part of the fun here. The next thing you notice is that you are in fact in the midst of yet another massive saucer. This one has successfully planted its landing gear right in the aisles. This is the presentation room and it's quite inviting as far as I'm concerned. It's difficult to see in here and it's just a thing of the past now, but they used to show the latest DVD releases in this mini theater. And by golly, you could just go to the movies right here for free. What a simply perfect treat. The aliens are hanging out here and there in the rafters. Here's another army jeep rendered immobile by the attacking aliens lurking above. A pair of giant ants invaded what used to be the home appliances department. Kind of weird that they're hanging here like this, but they're impressive nonetheless. On a significantly smaller scale, there was this fun diorama featuring another mutated insect. A monster octopus. Some flying saucers. And probably my favorite thing in the store, this wonderful Godzilla model, a very faithful rendering of the rubber suit used in 1964. I 
I love the face on this octopus monster. Oh no, I have to say this is my favorite thing in the store, the Atomic Cafe. This was a genuine full-service diner fashioned after 1950s aesthetics, where they would play old sci-fi and monster movies on this display like a drive-in theater. But that's only the half of it because the seating for this diner completes the experience as truly magical for those of us hopelessly nostalgic for this kind of thing. Not far from that, two very impressive jet planes set the stage for another staggering sight. A life-size version of the monster octopus. You can see his tentacles are crashing up through the floor, and these served as demo tables in the computer hardware department. When this place was in its glory, these unique tables were lined with all kinds of fully functioning hardware you could play around with. But as you can see here and there in the background, most of the store is just empty shelves and nobody's even here because there's just no reason to come here anymore. On our way out, we pass a highway patrolman desperately calling for backup, and there's not much inventory here except for gobs of miscellaneous stuff you can get at any Target or Walmart, and it's a sad end to a place that was once the highlight of this area. As you can imagine, this was a fun place to shop and just hang out with friends, especially if you enjoyed shopping for electronics and tech. Today it's all off limits, and I wonder if a lot of those displays will end up in auction or if everything will just get trashed. Who knows? But I hope you enjoyed the tour.